good Tuesday morning. One of the more upsetting, disturbing, heart-wrenching things I've ever seen in sports, we've all ever seen in sports, happened last night on Monday Night Football between the Bills and the Bengals as safety 24-year-old Damar Hamlin suffered cardiac arrest on the field after a collision with T. Higgins. He stood up. He passed out. They administered CPR on the field. And as we stand here this morning, because you probably have seen the story, maybe seen the video, have heard there were some overnight updates. His marketing representative put out the latest saying his vitals are back to normal. They have put him to sleep to put a breathing tube down his throat. They are currently running tests. We will provide updates as we have them. And we will do the same as soon as there is an update out there. We will get it to you. But this was different from the get-go, Boomer. And I know you've been on the field and you've seen some horrible injuries on the field. I don't think anybody has experienced something like this. And just watching it as a football fan and a viewer, I knew right away that something was different because of the reaction from everybody immediately trainers running off the field I'm assuming to get the defibrillator to administer CPR obviously going to break and just cutting away from the video as ESPN was doing you knew there was some serious stuff there as chilling a live scene as I have ever seen in sports good morning how are you yeah good morning Jay I'm just like everybody else uh, you know just hoping and praying that uh, DeMar is able to restore his life normally and and get up out of that hospital bed and walk out of there triumphantly and, and tell us that everything's going to be okay. Um, and uh, I, like you and like everybody else watching TV last night, uh, was just stunned by the reaction of the players. Um, there was no way that the players could resume the game. There's just there's just no way you could just see the emotion. You could see that the team surrounding DeMar to give him privacy as they are, are administering CPR. You know, all the worst thoughts that you have when you're a player and you see something like that, it's startling. And uh, especially with somebody that was as likable, it seems like, and somebody that was as a, a, a big leader of the, of the football team. So you could just see it in the eyes of the players. And then when you see Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, you know, hug, and you could just read their lips. You could see Joe saying, I'm sorry about this. And, and you could just see that interaction. You knew that it was more than just an injury, that there was something else going on here. And then when they finally did report that they were giving him CPR, you know, you knew they weren't going to play the game. I know there are people out there that are saying the NFL should have called this immediately and all this. You know, there's so many things and, and so many conversations that have to happen to get a true understanding of what's happening in real time on the ground. And, you know, the commissioner wasn't there. Troy Vincent wasn't there. The Maury Smith, I don't think, was there. These are all the heads of their respective areas yeah. uh, of, of the NFL trying to get the coach's sentiment, get the player sentiment, get the official sentiment. There's a lot of different aspects that have to go on to this. And ultimately they did the right thing. They got, they got it right. They, they just, they postponed the game. The players left the field, um, you know, and, and part of really, I think what we were all watching last night was the player reactions that we all felt so uh, emotionally connected to because watching them with their tears running down their eyes, literally three to four minutes after they're trying to, you know, win a football game is startling. Yeah, especially from guys that we don't normally see a lot of regular human emotion from. I mean, we see them get fired up if they get a first down. We see them in a post-game news conference maybe cracking a joke. You don't see them with this type of human reaction. And there was one shot when they were talking about maybe restarting the game, we found out later really wasn't even a discussion, but that's what was being talked about on ESPN at the time, where Josh Allen was sitting by himself on the bench, just staring out with tears in his eyes. And at that moment, I said, there is no yeah. way that he can take the field and play. And now I've never been in a situation where I have watched someone get CPR but there have been, you know, people commenting last night, if you sit there and you are watching that, it's so traumatic for the people that are witnessing it. And then you add on top that it is your friend, it is your teammate, it is a guy who is well-loved. This guy went to uh, Pitt, he played at Pitt football. Everybody I know out there was tweeting about how great of a kid this was. And to see him at 24 years old, you know, grasping on to life like that, 
I mean, I, I can't even imagine what those he, people. He went like. to uh, Central Catholic High School where Dan Marino went. Yep, and a lot of other professional athletes went, but that that was his high school. Um, you know, I, I was uh, I had a similar situation happen to me when I was 13 years old. A friend of mine got hit by a car before one of our baseball games, right in front of all of us, and he was laying in the street. And you know, my dad was our coach, and uh, my dad was a World War II guy, so he had seen everything. Yeah. And we were all sitting there stunned watching our friend laying in the, in the road. And my dad was, like, yelling at me to go get a blanket so he could put it over him and try to bring him back to life. Um, I, I, I can only think about, you know, those players and their initial feelings. And there's just no way that they could get themselves back up to play a football game again. And then think about the doctors and the trainers and what they did to try to save this young man's life. And hopefully they've done that. I think the biggest thing that, you know, we all are praying for is that, you know, he did suffer cardiac arrest. They did get his heart started. The question is, is how long did it take? Right. And that and that's what we're waiting on. Wait, everybody's waiting on to hear, you know, it, was there a uh, elongated time where there was a loss of oxygen to his brain? And right. We just pray like, like you've never prayed before that this is not the case. So I... Uh, you know, I wake up, you know, I couldn't I couldn't get any sleep last night, you know, I'm watching the news, waiting for updates, just like everybody else out there was. Sure. Yeah. And I and I have to say, you know, being in TV and being in a studio or being on the radio here for four hours talking about this, you know, it's not easy. And I thought like ESPN did about as good as they possibly could. You know, Ryan Clark was awesome last night. Uh, I thought that Lisa Salter was awesome last night. I thought that Troy and Joe were great and, you know, really sp- had the right tone about everything and just trying to give information without trying to speculate and trying to do the best that they possibly could. Susie Culber, Adam Schefter, Booker McFarlane, all of those people were put in really, really difficult situations. Oh, they were just a terrible, I mean, especially the guys back in the studio. Now, a lot of the times, you know, they are at the game at Monday Night Football. They were not this time with Susie Culber, Booger, and Adam Schefter. When they threw it back to them, especially Booger. I mean, he just kept trying to say, like, I don't know what else to say other than... That's um, right. And he kept saying that, and which was, was the right thing. I, I do have to give ESPN credit, too, for... They, they took breaks. They came back. They gave a quick update. They went away again. To resist the urge to keep it there and make and sh- it... And a, show the highlights. Right. And make it a TV spectacle, I think, should be commended. Because a lot of other places would have done that. We're going to keep it here live. We're going to do this. We're going to keep Joe and Troy on the air the entire time. We're going to show the thing over and over again. We're going to speculate. They did none of that. Right. It was just, there's, you know, when Joe Buck would come back from break, he goes, there's nothing else to say right now. They are administering CPR on the field. We're going to take another break. We'll come back and give you an update when we can. And I just thought that that was, I mean, we were all on pins and needles waiting for that update. But, you know, there's a lot of other networks, both sports and news, that would have kept it there and then turned this into a reality TV show. Well, there were a lot of networks that were covering this uh, 24-7 other than just ESPN. But that that's for another day. But I'm I talking mean, about the live, yes. them carrying the game at yeah. that, at they, that they, time. They, yeah. uh, they're, they're, it's an, an impossible situation, you know. Sitting in the studio, and um, you know, sometimes we lose power at a game or something, and then you come back to us in the studio, and you got to be ready, and you mm-hmm. got to be ready to be able to talk. That's a different s- situation. That's you know, the games are still being played and things are happening. Um, this this is just nobody has ever been through anything like this within the world of football. Now we've had major injuries. We have had the Eric Legrand injury. Our friend Mikey Nichols yeah. got severely injured. Both of those players would tell you that they wish they could suit it back up again and play. And Mikey has even told us many times that sure. he's going to get back on that ice and, and skate again. Yeah, Ryan Shazier was the – that was the most devastating one I had watched live on TV in the yep. NFL prior to this. Right. And we know that he never played again, and he can walk now, but he's not – he's obviously not the same. Um, but, yes, I mean – but it's ne- it's never been like this. You know, it's, it's never been a question if someone was going to live or not. I mean, that was the difference right. last night. I just, you know, the whole thing about the criticizing of restarting the game and not starting the game and not calling the game. I mean, everybody's just got to stop. Like, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, like the, the, the sewer pit and cesspool of social media just creates even more problems and everything else. And, you know, every, 
everything, you know, has to take a, a certain amount of time. And quite frankly, those doctors and those whoever they were that were administering the CPR on the field are heroes. And if you ask them if they are heroes, they would tell you, no, we're not heroes. We're doing our job. This is why we're here. And every NFL stadium, and I thought ESPN and I know CBS and NBC and Fox uh, and Prime, I'm sure Prime now, you know, we're all uh, educated at the beginning of the season. This is what every NFL stadium has at it in terms of doctors, uh, hospitals on call, emergency staff on call. Right, there's independent every, EMTs every, and there's every, also team doctors. Right, yeah. every, there's, 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 and you're getting what I would like to think in, in the most extreme situation, you are getting the best possible care that you possibly can get. And uh, I know those hospitals out in Cincinnati, they are all top shelf. This is a trauma hospital that he was sent to. Um, it's a, it's a tr- if, if I were in that situation, that's where I would want to go. Um, so they, they spare no expense, and they're going to do everything they possibly can to make sure that DeMar Hamlin has a future. That's the key. That's the key here in, in making sure that he walks out of that hospital. So that's what we all have to hope for. That's what we all have to pray for. And, you know, I think about our great game of football, and I think about, you know, once again, you know, we have a serious injury. It's on a Monday night game. The previous Monday night game in Cincinnati or earlier this year, maybe that was a Thursday night game. I'm not sure. It might have been Thursday night. It was. Uh, when Tua, you know, had the concussion. It was Thursday night on And we all, saw, we all saw the images of that. Mm-hmm. And we all said, well, that's the first time we've ever seen that. Yeah. You know, so now here's another one. This is the first time I've ever seen this, uh, you know, on a football field. I saw it in real life personally, and I, and I know how that affected me. But uh, I, I, I think the players and the coaches, I give uh, both Sean McDermott and Sean Ta- uh, Zach Taylor a lot of credit, coming together, talking it out, you know, discussing it, discussing the players' feelings, discussing whether or not the game could be resumed. And I'm sure the coaches were totally against that, knowing their players because oh, they're all course. dialed in. Yeah, And uh, I would also – I would like to think that that they reiterated that back to the NFL, which would be the head of the union, Roger Goodell, and Troy Vincent, all three guys, which are basically the leadership of the NFL, making the proper and you know decisive decision. Okay, let's end the game and let's postpone it, and then we'll wake up tomorrow morning and we'll figure out how we're going to move forward and try to figure out how we're going to end the season. Right. I mean, and I think, too, they were waiting on more information about what was going on with DeMar Hamlin. I mean, if DeMar Hamlin had, you know, they had woken up, had, was speaking, was breathing on his own, then they might have considered, OK, our, our guy is all right. That's not what happened. Of course, as we know this morning, he is he is sedated and he's in critical condition you know, still at the hospital. There was a UEFA soccer game where there was a guy that ended up having cardiac arrest on the field. And same kind of situation where they didn't know whether or not they are going to restart the game or what. They revived the player on the field. They took him to the hospital. And I believe he was able to FaceTime with his teammates. Okay. And they did restart the game. Now, the question surrounding that situation was, was UEFA going to start the game regardless? Or did it take the players to see that their player was okay well, so that, they could resume the game? So, I mean, there's that's always That's the major point, though, right? I mean, that's the major point. Yeah, I know. Is, is I, the guy all right? Right. And it, it, it always is the major point. I, no, you know, I'm and saying I, in, in restarting the game yes. is what I'm saying. And I, and I think that if the players like if the players would have seen DeMar being taken off on a stretcher, give a thumbs up, it's a different story. But that was not the case here. Yeah. That was not the case here. And you could see by the reaction – Pretty much quick, pretty pretty within a minute, how those players were reacting to what uh, Demar was going through. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just you wake up this morning and you realize that you know it's a great game. It's a it's it's a wonderful league. It's given us all great opportunities in our life, but you also have to take a moment to sit back and reflect and think about the dangers that every player, you know, goes through every time he puts his uniform on. And I just. You know, we, we make fun of the um, the roughing the passer and things like that. The league is trying to make the game as safe as they yeah. possibly can. Well, and this was just a weird situation where this could have happened to anybody. This was not an illegal hit. This, T. Higgins was doing what he's supposed to do. Catch the ball, lower his shoulders, and try to split through the safeties. DeMar was doing the right thing, trying to go up, deliver a hit. And it looked like uh, T. Higgins' shoulder hit him right in the solar plex area. And uh, and and that's basically you know the, the force of that impact, and it just goes to show you how 
forceful those impacts are. <laughs> and, and just to put it in perspective, this is why I say like a guy like Mike White goes out there with those ribs. Yeah. You know, it's not easy to go out there and play where you can't protect yourself or you have something bothering you and expect to play uh, effectively. So. Right, and that's and that's what the I'm sure the sort of informed speculation is, is that the blunt force trauma of the hit to the chest area is what stopped his heart. Now, we don't know that for a fact. I, 24 years old in the greatest shape that anybody could be in, playing NFL football, it would be a shocker if it were anything else because you did see where that hit was. You've heard of lacrosse goalies yes. that get shots right to the chest with that he- very heavy lacrosse ball that it has happened to. Mm-hmm. So this is something that, that can happen, and that's what right the now speculation the speculation be, yeah. is. But we, we don't know for a fact. What we do know is that his vitals are back to normal. It was tweeted out by his uh, one of his uh, marketing representatives last night. Um, and he has been the bill. A, the bills also put out something this morning. Yeah, as that well. it was officially cardiac arrest. Is right, what they that said. it was officially. And you know, like I said, the University of Cincinnati Medical Center is uh, one of the top hospitals in the in the Midwest and in Cincinnati. And and they they are about as good as you can possibly get when it comes to dealing with something like this. Yeah. So yeah, the latest was from his marketing guy. The bills put out something prior to that, basically saying that. It was cardiac arrest, and he's still in critical condition. And his marketing guy put out that uh, the breathing tube is down his throat, and they basically put him in a medically induced coma to to deal uh, with that. Um, so that's where it stands now. We'll continue to keep you updated as we get the information on Demar Hamlin. And of course, uh, we are hoping the entire nation, anybody, the world that was watching this last night, is hoping that he comes out of this. And here's okay. why. And here's why this is uh, really an amazing sport that has amazing fans and we are an amazing country. He has uh, his own charity mm-hmm. and his charity had about $275,000 in, in total funds. Uh, it, it ballooned up over $3 million last night. Yeah. For, you know, a, toy, be, for a toy drive right. yeah, that he was it, doing. Yeah. These guys are, uh, we that played the game are gladiators. That's the way it is. It's, and we know that there's a risk every time we step on the field, no matter what level we play it at. But it is a great game. It is uh, a game that brings so much to so many, and it's our game. It's our it's our country's game. This is this is who we are, and uh, we pray for Demar. And I know that you know he's going to come walking out of that hospital, and he's going to say, "I'm okay," and you know, I want I want the NFL to resume. 